Well, listen, we want to welcome you today, and uh, man, I got to tell you, it's been an incredible weekend from uh, Friday when we, as a church, uh, you've, you've heard it already at every campus when we released our first live album, and then to see that thing go on the charts the way it did, man, I've been following that, and you've been sharing that. It's, it's been incredible to be the fourth most downloaded Christian album like in our country. Is pretty amazing, and so we've celebrated that. I want you to do this one more time for all of our musicians. Can we just give them a hand? I mean, like, it's a huge deal. I, I don't know when the last time you wrote a song was, but uh, for me, that's not my strength, and it's been so cool to see the way that God's used that. And so, man, we're just dreaming about what that can look like. Wednesday night at all of our campuses, a lot of you did this. You went to house church. And man, I just want to thank you because that's a huge step. We say this all the time. Sunday morning is come and see. We want you to be here. We want you to invite people. It's kind of like a big funnel, you know. We want to motivate you and encourage you. But Wednesday night, man, Wednesday night is like Bible doing. It's when we go and we be and we share meals together and we pray for each other. I had three new families in my house church. It was dessert and appetizer night, my favorite night. So we ate good. We prayed for each other. We got to know some of the people that we sit next to on a Sunday, and so don't miss that. That's just kind of kicking off. Then tonight, man, tonight's a big night for us. At all of our campuses, it's at different times each place, but Venture 101 is a really important thing. It's where we meet you. If you want to get to know our staff, come on. We're going to tell you the story of our church, but you get to tell us your story, and then we help you find your place. So if, you, I mean, if, you're just, if you're with us today, if you're watching online, you're going, I just had not found my place. Like, I need, I need help with that. I don't want you to come to Venture 101, okay? You'll see, you can sign up online, or you can stop in a lot of the atriums today, and we'll get you signed up. Well, let's talk about the series, all right? Salt and Light. I've begun to see the little stickers. If you had not got one, I've seen them around town that just say Salt and Light, and that refers to the series that we're in right now where we're talking about one of Jesus' most popular messages. He gave this message called the Sermon on the Mount. He said, you're to be the salt of the earth and you're to be the light of the world. And I love that because it gives such clarity to who we should be as Christ followers. But the question we've asked is really simple. It's just like, like how? Like I get it. Like I, maybe I've lost my saltiness and I want to bring it back. I used to be on fire for the Lord, man. I used to love to worship. I used to love to be in church. And then something happened and I just... Man, I quit being in the Word, or I quit being around other good influences, or man, I went off to college, I got a basketball team on the second row right here, and things just begin to change. How do I find that saltiness again? Or I get it, man, I want to be light, like I want to shine at my school, I want to be an example at my office, I want to be my classroom to be different than the other classrooms, but I just feel like I, I, I don't know how to shine. So we've taken this week by week, the first week we said one way that you can stand out, you're going to love this, is to be rested. Like, when was the last time you said, hey, how are you doing? And your reply was, I am rested. Man, we don't say that. And so we said, one way you can be different is to rest, to have this new rhythm of rest where we fill up first. Second week, one of the ways we stand out is we studied Jesus, and we said Jesus had compassion. There's nothing like, there's one thing that separated him from all the other rabbis and teachers. Like, this was a teacher that was full of compassion for the people that he did life with. Last week, we said another way we stand out is by living by faith. In fact, we said it this way. We want to choose faith over fear. And that stands out. Now, this week, this week, we're going to go a little different direction. And we're going to say another thing that stands out is God's grace. God's grace. When you experience God's grace, God's grace changes everything. Now, how many of you know that? Sometimes you get in a season of life where everything changes. Uh, man, now you can look around probably today. I know we've got two people on our staff as a church that have upcoming freshmen in college. And I'm watching them during the week. I'm like scared to ask how they're doing. <laughs> because they're entering a season of life. If they're on your row, they're still crying. I mean, it's just, it shocks you being an empty nester if that's where you are. Like that's a season of change. Uh, we've got college students here, already mentioned that. There's nothing like being a college student. All of a sudden, there's all this freedom. Everything changes. Uh, there's nothing like getting married. I mean, that, that is a season of life where you finally realize how selfish you've probably been for a long time. And you get married. What about having kids? I, I told you last week, man, I, I met somebody at Lincoln Road that was literally, I mean, I'm telling you, they were like at their due date. 
It was going to be at any moment. And I wanted to tell them, your best, best days are behind you. You know, like, <laughs> it's over. It's a season of life that just changes, like everything changes. Listen, God's grace is more powerful than every one of those seasons of life. When you experience his grace, it is more than, it is greater than all of those changes. Now, I want you to see it today. And you're going to see it in a guy named Zacchaeus. If you know anything about Zacchaeus, you know he was a wee little man. But there's so much more to him. And so I want you to get your Bibles. If you've got them, I want you to open it up to the Gospels. We've been studying the Gospels. And the Gospels are just the story of Jesus. There's four different books, four different eyewitnesses, four different accounts. So you'll see some of the stories in each one of the books, all with different details. But today we're going to look at Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. Luke 19. Let's see what Jesus did when he encountered Zacchaeus. Here we go. Jesus entered Jericho. And he was passing through the town. Now, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree since Jesus was coming that way. Now, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said, you ready? He's about to go full mom on him. All right, this is such a mom move. Zacchaeus, Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Okay. So he came down, of course, at once, and he welcomed him gladly. Verse 7, all the people saw this, and they began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up, and he said to the Lord, look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, and he had, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Now get ready for verse 10 because if I had to give you one verse, if I had to give you just one verse that could be our verse, remember when you got in a relationship and you had a song? This is Venture's verse. This is the one. When you think about our vision, when you think about our mission, and you want to know what we're passionate about, where does it come from? Does it come from Jesus, or is it just something we made up? Here it is. Here's our verse. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. That is what Jesus came to do, and that is who we are called to be, a movement, a church that is seeking and saving people that are lost. Now, I want to to take this. I want you to travel back up with me to verse 4, all right? That's where we're going to begin to kind of unpack this a little bit because there's some things going on here that are pretty radical for that day. Verse 4 says, so he, he's talking about Zacchaeus, so he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, you got to understand that that is a pretty major detail of the story because it is not normal in that day, in that culture, for a man to run. But my man Zacchaeus began to run. He picks up his robe. I'm going to go high waters on you. He picks up his robe, ties it up, takes off his sandals, carries them in his hand, and he takes off. I mean, he is running, and he gets to the bottom of this tree, and he begins to climb. When's the last time you saw a grown man climb a tree? Man, we don't see it today. In this context, this was so foreign. you got to understand, this was a statement This was a sense of desperation, and he's not the first one to do this. Think about the passages we've been studying. Even just one chapter before, so in Luke 18, you meet two blind beggars. They're in the same situation that Zacchaeus is in. They are surrounded by a crowd, and they sense someone is coming, and they just begin to shout out, teacher, teacher, master, master, have mercy on me. We talked last week about the woman that was bleeding for 12 years. Where does she find herself? Just like Zacchaeus, stuck in a crowd. And the crowd is pushing her all around, and they're pushing her out because of shame, because she was a female, because of all the things about her culture that leaves her at the very bottom. She had tried everything, and so she gets down under the crowd. She makes her way over to Jesus. The the text tells us she was just able to grab the hem of his garment, but she reached out. 
this week in our Bible reading plan, and I hope you're doing this with us. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, this is an easy way for you to begin to get in Scripture. And it's something we walk through together. It's on the app. It's, it's, sometimes it's even less than a chapter a day. But we read about the four friends. Remember the four friends. Remember there's a crowd. They can't get to Jesus. So instead, they get their four friends with the man that's on the mat that they're trying to get healed, and they carry him up to the roof. These, these guys had to be college students because who else would do this? They get him up to the and then they dig a hole, like all the way through the roof so that they can lower their friend to Jesus. Here's what I want you to see, because this is really important. Run, climb, shout, reach, dig after Jesus. What and who are we all about? Right, we're about bringing people to Jesus, running, digging, climbing, shouting, reaching, being desperate to get people in front of Jesus. Here, here's what happens. I think so often we live and we get stuck in our pride and we put aside our wonder. These guys that we read about in scripture, they put aside their pride and they acted on their wonder. What could Jesus do? If I just got in front of him, if I just touched his robe, if I just shouted out his name, if I just had an encounter with Jesus, would it change everything? And they begin to wonder. It sounds a lot like Jesus told us to be this way. Remember, he told us to be like little children. Matthew 18, 3. Truly, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. What would kids do? Man, they would run. <laughs> they climb all the time. You're tired of hearing them shout, mama, mama, mama. They wonder. Daddy, daddy, could you do this? I mean, if I just take it to daddy, he can do it. They have no limit in their mind, in their capacity as to what dad could do. They trust him. They put their faith in him. And Jesus says, that's who I want you to be like. I want you to be like these friends we've been studying. They're not characterized by their pride. They're characterized by their wonder. I wonder what Jesus could do. Number two, you can't reach someone Beyond your reach. Now, that's a simple statement, but it's really powerful. And I'm going to tell you, I got this from, a, um, if I've got any teachers in the room, my, my, I've shared this before. My wife's a teacher, and she went to a leadership development deal, and they said it this way, you can't teach someone that you can't reach. And their focus was with our teachers. They're like, hey, you got to ask questions. you got to build bridges. You guys are two different generations now, and you've got to find a way to connect with this generation that you're teaching so, so before you just start teaching, you gotta, you've got to reach them. You've got to develop a relationship with them. And I want you to see the way Jesus handled this. Because this is, this is something like in our culture that's, that's really uncomfortable. And so I want you to watch the way Jesus handled Zacchaeus. Because we're studying what Jesus did so that we can do what Jesus did. This is a pretty powerful moment. The streets are packed there's no room for anybody. People have been out there from early in the morning because they just heard, Jesus is coming this way, Jesus is coming this way. So you know like I know that all the high tax bracket people got there early and they got the seats of priority. And they were waiting. They'd save seats. They were in the right spot. They were with the right people. And here he comes, the rabbi, the teacher, the one everybody's talking about. This is their chance to share their need, to bless him, to share with him, to shake his hand. And then Jesus walks right by every one of them to get to the root of a big old sycamore tree to look up at the one person that nobody wanted to see or talk about, Zacchaeus. All the people that he would talk to that day, he chooses Zacchaeus. Look at this, it's Luke 19, seven. All the people saw this and here's what they did. You ready? They began to mutter. That's the word the text uses, is mutter. Today we would say they begin to snap. They begin to text. And here's what they text, you ready? He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. You're not gonna believe who Jesus chose. Did you see who he ran up to? He went to the tree and he went home with Zacchaeus. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. And then here's what they begin to reply. Look at this emoji. This is, this is whoa. <laughs> what? Of all the people on the streets that day, that's the one he chose? Mind blown, shock. This can't be. 
Listen, as believers, you and I have to wrestle with the fact that Jesus loved sinners. I, I think we wanna know what Jesus did so that we can do what Jesus did. But, but this is what he did. Like he loved people that were far from God. Like he saw people that no one else wanted to see. He reached people that no one else wanted to reach. No one cared about Zacchaeus. You gotta personalize this a little bit. Zacchaeus had cheated people. Zacchaeus was a traitor. Zacchaeus was a Jew working for the Roman government. Zacchaeus was the chief amongst them. He was getting a percentage of everybody's stealing from everybody. He took advantage of you. He took your money. And all of a sudden, that's the one that Jesus goes home with. I guess a church, like we gotta deal with that. Like, are we okay with that? Are we responding to that? Zacchaeus wasn't just beyond anyone's reach. No one wanted to reach him. What is your reach? Because your reach is our reach as a church. So who do you wanna reach? Do you wanna reach white people? You wanna reach black people? You wanna reach private school kids? You wanna reach public school kids? Do you wanna reach kids in apartment complexes all through our city at something called Camp Venture? Or do you wanna reach just the people who can come when we tell them to come? Do you wanna leave these walls and be the church outside of these walls or do you wanna establish a little my four and no more? I'm just telling you, when I read this and I study what Jesus did, there is no my four and no more. There is a heart for people who have not heard the good news of Jesus. There is compassion for people. There is grace that changes everything. It's the story of the gospel. Look, it is so clear. You know this verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Those who had it all together, no. He loved the world. I mean, look at it right here. What would Jesus do? It's so clear. He comes to the bottom of the tree and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Do you know what the word Zacchaeus means? It, I, I, found, I didn't know until I was studying. Zacchaeus, of all the things that that word, of his name, of all the things it could mean, it means righteous one. Now here's the thing, <laughs> everybody laughed at that, except Jesus. It's like Jesus knew something before everyone else. It's like Jesus knew if he could just have some time with him, things were beginning again to change. God's grace changes everything. Here's some real application. Don't limit God by who you think he can reach. Don't limit God by who you are comfortable with him reaching. Don't limit God by who or what you see in people today. That is so hard for me because I do. Because of the things I see in their life in that moment, it limits my vision. And I have to pray, God, open my eyes to what you see. Jesus saw Zacchaeus as the righteous one. No one else saw that yet. How does Jesus see that child that is still wondering? How does Jesus see that neighbor that you are so tired of? <laughs> How does Jesus see that person that just walked into one of our campuses in this moment and you're going, oh, you're not gonna believe who came today. Mind blown. It's not the way Jesus sees that, man. He has a plan that is different, that is bigger. Now, I, I wanna make this really practical because it, it's that kind of message. And so let me tell you some things I need you to do because this is what Zacchaeus did. The first thing is this. I want you to get past the crowd. Boy, sometimes the crowd can be discouraging. Sometimes it can be really hard, the things that the crowd says. Sometimes the crowd can make it really hard to get to Jesus. Look at every one of these stories that we just talked about. Zacchaeus, he had to run ahead of the crowd. The woman that was bleeding for all those years, she had to get below and get under and get through the crowd. The blind men, they had to shout above the crowd. The four friends, they had to get to the roof to get through, to get past the crowd. There are people that are watching and listening to this message, I know this, and you have been rejected by the crowd. And I'm telling you, it hurts. I'm not telling you that's easy. It wasn't easy for any of these people in scripture. Man, college students, come on, man, you're in a season where if you make a stance for some things, man, you get left out of the crowd. 
It's not unique to just high school. I mean, to college students, it's true in high school. It's true in middle school. It's true as an adult. Middle school never ends, right? Sometimes we're going to be rejected by the crowd, and when you are rejected by the crowd, you're probably a part of the best crowd. Because who did Jesus run to? The ones that were rejected. Listen, maybe your problem, maybe your issue that you're having is not so much from the crowd. Maybe you're just tired of the crowd. Like we live in South Mississippi. We live in the Bible Belt. And maybe you've heard this because I've heard it a hundred times. I'm so tired of religion. I'm so tired of all the churches. They're full of hypocrites. Man, I see this person on a Sunday morning, and then I see them at the ballpark, and they are wearing out a 15-year-old umpire. I'm tired of seeing the post, right? This person posts this. They say they're all about this, but they're posting their pictures or say this. And you've been burned out by the crowd that is supposed to be the Christian crowd. And you're thinking, I don't want to be a part of that because I see what that means. Listen, Jesus would tell you, just like he'd tell me, get over the crowd. Accept my invitation to come down from the tree and go to your house with you. Whether you have been rejected of the crowd or you're just tired of the crowd, I need you to know that Jesus had some pretty bold things to say to the crowd. In fact, I want you to see them because this, this needs to encourage you. If you get frustrated with the culture in South Mississippi, the religious culture, listen to what Jesus had to say. These are some of his boldish words. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs. That's an ultimate slam of that day, a whitewashed tomb. Which looks beautiful on the outside, but on the inside you're full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. You have wanted to say that to somebody, hadn't you? You are full of everything unclean <laughs> in Jesus' name. He said it. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that this week. That's not, the, that's not salt and light. In the same way, on the outside you appear to be people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Man, the point of me pointing that out is to say, Jesus didn't have anything for that insider righteous language either. He was for the ones that were on the outside. Don't get caught in that trap. Instead, let's be who God's called us to be. And let's find those that are lost and those that are looking for hope. Here's the second thing we gotta do. If we're gonna apply this, we gotta put feet to our faith. Yeah, come on now, you know you, you, know you believe this passionately. But I've got to ask you, are you doing this? Because watch Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus spent some time with Jesus. He came down from his tree. He went to his house. He spent time with Jesus. And then watch what he says. This is verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up. It'd be like you standing up in the middle of Stone County right now or up in Jones County. You just stand up right where you are in front of everybody. And you all of a sudden say, look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. The standard of that time was 20%. He said, I'm going to give half. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'm going to repay back four times that amount. What I want you to see is, man, after Zacchaeus spent time with Jesus, he didn't walk out of that lunch appointment with his head down like this, like, oh my gosh, I've messed up. I can never be forgiven. He didn't walk out full of shame. He didn't walk out just full of guilt, like so heavy. Like, will I ever be able to be back in relationship with Jesus? Man, I'm disqualified. He walked out changed and hopeful. He walked out beginning to put feet to his faith. His life from that moment on was gonna look different. He made some bold declarations about this is who I am now in Christ, and because of that, my life and my habits are gonna look different. I want that for you. I don't want you to give out of guilt, man. Like that feeling like the basket's coming by. I guess I need to do something. Man, that is so different than this picture of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is like, hey, I've just been, I've just been reclaimed by Jesus. I, I, my life has been, I am hopeful now. And so I want to give back joyfully because he's just changed my life. It's like the first time. It's like when you fall in love. And everything changes. You will do anything for that person because you love them. You respond graciously and cheerfully because it's what you want to do. Now, listen, I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of this because this has been so cool. We've seen this in our church from someone that I love to see every Sunday. And I want to show you her picture. She got baptized a couple of weeks ago. Her name is Erin, and she's here in this room right now at Lincoln Road. But why don't you show this picture of her being baptized? 
All right, she was baptized at our campus by Jordan, and I think we've got the picture. Um, here she is. Uh, Jordan's the one with the mustache, if you're wondering. That's Jordan. But that's Erin. Erin's from Boston. She doesn't really talk like she's from Boston, but she's from Boston. And she's got a couple of kids, and, and uh, she began to get plugged in at Venture. And the more she came, and after she got baptized, she kept saying, hey, I want to give back. Like, I want to be a part of what's going on. So one Sunday morning, I came through, and, it, and, and like, we get here early on Sunday mornings. This is like around 7 o'clock, and no one's here. I mean, the band's in here, but Erin's in the atrium out here, and she's working on a balloon arch. And I was like, well, Erin, what are you doing? Like, hey, good morning, but you're here awful early. She was like, yeah, yeah. Actually, I just got back from Buffalo. Me and my family went to Buffalo to see my people over the summer before school starts. But we just got back late last night, and I'm coming to put together this balloon arch. So she does the balloon arch, and then she goes home, and she gets her kids, and she brings them back for at the movies. She watched movies, and then she goes works at the coffee bar at 11 o'clock. And I want you to see this. Look at this. These are all the different balloon arches that she's done for our church. This is the way that she's choosing to give back. This is something that she can do, that she can now share, and that you've taken a picture with. Do you see the connection between Zacchaeus and, and Aaron? Because I know you, you're going, oh man, I may not be rich, I may not be wealthy, I'm not sure I could do anything. I need you to see there's a response that happens that you can't stop. It's exactly what Aaron's doing. Now here's the third one, and this is the last one, this is so powerful. I want you to take Jesus home. Oh man, there's, there's moments in scripture because this was written in the Middle East over 2,000 years ago. And so sometimes the cultural thing trips us up. But when he says he's coming home with her, that's a radical statement. And he said it really clearly. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house when? Today. The evening meal was the center of the family. This was when everybody came together. This was, everything was built around that culture, that meal. And Jesus says, I'm coming home with you and I don't care who else is there. I'm coming home with you and I'm gonna sit at the same table as you. I'm coming home with you, the one everybody talks about. I'm gonna be at your house, at your meal, eating your food with your people and you don't go home and prepare, you just show up. Can I tell you that that's what he's telling you? Because you think like me, no, I'm going to go clean up the house and then I'll get my best people and then I'll call the preacher and a few others and see if they can come because Jesus is coming. No, no, no. Jesus says, you just stay right there. I'm coming as you are and let's begin to talk and connect. I need you to see that because I want you to feel that. Zacchaeus had heard. Zacchaeus had heard about the blind beggar. Zacchaeus heard about those friends. Everybody was talking about those friends that built a hole and stuff. Man, he'd heard, he'd heard about the woman that was healed. I know he'd heard about Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector that Jesus said, come and follow me. And now this was his chance. This meal was his moment. The only thing that separated Zacchaeus from Jesus was from the tree to the ground. What separates you from experiencing Jesus? What separates you from understanding his life-changing grace. <laughs> is it the distance from the tree to the ground? No, not anymore. It's just the distance from your head to your heart. So listen, I, I need you to just bow your heads for just a moment. and I need you to examine your reach. Who are you willing to reach? I, I need you to ask the same question. Man, have you put feet to your faith? Like, does anybody know your life has been changed by the gospel? Because for Zacchaeus, he couldn't help but show it. He couldn't help but respond, and I want that for you. I want it to be a bigger change than all of those changes in life when you encounter God's grace. Now listen, here's how we're going to respond today. It's going to be a little bit different. These guys are about to sing a song over us. And the song's all about the lifestyle, the choices of Jesus. It's about salt and light. It's about how Jesus sees you and how he sees me. And so I, I need you to allow the words of this song to kind of reframe in you maybe the way you think Jesus sees you. Because he is at your table 
and he wants to change your life by his grace. God, I thank you. I thank you for songs that point us in a direction. God, I thank you for your truth and for people like Zacchaeus that give us such hope that you're not done with us and that you can change us. God, I thank you for your grace and I thank you for a series where we're just studying exactly what you did because we wanna do what you did. God, thank you for seeking and for saving the lost. It's in your name we pray, amen.